Oh my goodness, so here we are getting ready to finish up these gorgeous earrings and chokers made from what? Kitchen and bath caulk. And then I'm going to do the outside edges of the heart black. So what I recommend is that you paint your base first. So that way when you go to do the black edges, um, it doesn't mess up, you know what I mean? So I mean, whatever, that's what I'm looking for. Whatever order you want to paint everything in, you can do that. So I'm just reusing a paint plate that I already had from earlier. And I didn't really pick these colors for any reason other than the fact they reminded me of a sunset. So, so let me just do something related to a sunset. And then this is where I tried to see if I could use the clear glue, the clear Elmer's glue, like a resin, to see if it would be a great um, covering, like just like a resin or something like that, but that was a no. It was a like, yeah, no, we're not gonna do that. So, I'm trying to think of what color is gonna go first. I think I'm gonna do the purple first. So, I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush, and I got my brushes from Hobby Lobby a long time ago. But you can use any kind of brush. And really what I'm doing is I'm just taking globs of paint. I'm not gonna brush it on because I don't wanna have to worry about putting on 24 million coats. So I'm just really honestly globbing it on because it doesn't matter to me. I want it to be thick in its appearance and how it dries or what have you. So I'm just taking a glop of paint and just putting it down. Now it will take longer to dry this way. So if you want, you could probably speed it up if you want to. You could probably speed it up with a hair dryer or you could probably stick it in the oven. I'm not sure um, however you want to do it. This is non-toxic paint, so I don't see how putting it in a low oven or with a low dry hair dryer will hurt anything, but read the packaging direction and follow with caution. Okay. So I'm just globbing it on there. And then I'm also gonna kind of do like an ombre effect. So after I rinse this brush off, then we're gonna go into adding the pink and then we'll add the yellow and then we're gonna paint the edges black. And because this is um, not random, but you know, it's art hearts. So I want them to not look perfect. So it doesn't matter to me if I go to put the black barbed wire around the edges if some of the color of the paint gets on there, and that's fine. Pretty. And what brand in a second, in case someone wants to know. Oh, how was y'all's Thanksgiving? Oh, mama's so good. This is our first Thanksgiving in our new home. And um, my family came over and we had such a good time. And everyone got full, was blessed, hungry, didn't leave hungry. So much food was ridiculous. I was so hungry ahead of schedule. I ate until my little heart was content. I pray you all do it too. That's what it looks like. This is where I'm just going up into the pink a little bit to add some of that bleed effect. And we're gonna do the same thing with the pink and the purple. I'm just gonna go back and do it after I can add some more of the yellow. Okay. Pretty. really 
it really dry in order for that to work, okay? So now what I'm doing is just going through the purple, creating my a non-blending line. I kind of want to add a little bit down here to I just want to break up that color. And then you could add some black in there if you want to, but I'm not, not going to do that. So, we could go ahead though and start painting the black from the outside. And to me, it won't even matter like if some of that black gets on there. So I'm going to use, this is a little fuzzy brush that I have. Now this is a brush you could use to flick paint. Um, of course it does, once it gets really wet, it stops flicking as perfect as you want it to. But I use this one to do the outside edge colors of all the other ones. Or you could use a smaller brush, like find one of your really fluffy brushes. Like you could use something fluffy like this one to put the black on the outside. But I just don't like all those hairs out there. I feel like I have a little bit more control over this one. And even over this one. You can add glitter to your paint. So I'm just gonna start dolloping it on. I noticed that I have one little hair kind of sticking out to the side on the brush. I'm gonna be mindful of. So you can paint your sides of your earrings too. But for now, just go ahead and get all of this on there. And see, you notice that you have, because you have ridges and everything in the cock, you're gonna wanna make sure to get paint in all your ridge areas. And you'll see it like once it dries, you'll be able to go back in there and touch it up. And if it gets too close to your design that you have in the center, you can always use a toothpick to go in there and do that. You know, just put some paint on your toothpick and call it a day. Now what you could do also is you could take some of the purple, the pink, and the yellow, and you could bleed it into the black in different areas. That would be really cute. I'm gonna lay it down just so we can finish the last side over here. And I'm just gonna put my pokey tool through the hole that we've already pre-drilled. Told you that matter if it gets inside the other colors or not, it's still gonna be pretty, and it won't matter if you have that color bleed in there unless you can. That matters. Really. I need to go and get a little bit more black for the other one. That's what it looks like so far. So I'm gonna sit it over. So I decided to do the outside of this earring in purple and pink because of the black. And so we're gonna use the fluffy brush for that one. So we're just gonna dip in our purple paint and we're just gonna put it along here. Let me move this out there so I stop reaching over there. I apologize. So and I don't care if it gets on the wood either because this one I want to kind of be like a spatter design. 
for our barbed wire jewelry, but I just had an idea to have purple barbed wire. I don't know, I feel like that'd be so cool. So, we're just gonna splotch the paint on here using the fluffy brush. Any fluffy brush you have will do. If you don't have one, just use Q-tips. Just be mindful the cotton might get on there, which you could claim is an artistic element, right? <laughs> if you want to. So, we're gonna splotch that up. And be sure you get all the crevices of the caulk. And I believe, I'm sure this will need more than one coat. So let me get my pokey tool. And again, I've already done all the, um, drill all the holes. So we're gonna sit that over to the side to dry. Let's the color. Need a little bit more paint. Okay, so this color is Purple Pizzazz by Amer by Deco Art Americana. It's one of my favorite purples. And the other color I used, which was the, um, like a purple, I mean like a, a rose colored pink is called Razzle Dazzle, called Razzle Berry by Deco Art Americana. And then the mustard color is Antique Gold by Anita's Craft Paint. Okay. So then you'll know what colors I use. So now we're just gonna, I really like doing this. This is my favorite way to paint, right? I don't know, just splotching it on there. Because then it doesn't seem like it needs a rhyme or reason, right? You can just kind of go as, as you want to. And this reminds me of a frame. So what if you wanted to put some pictures in here or dazzle it up with some paper that you could put in here under some resin or under this, the Mod Podge 3D Magic? That would be pretty. So again, it's your design, do what you want, or you could paint a design on the inside of this as well, and that'll be pretty. So this is my rendition of again barbed wire, barbed wire jewelry. And I wanted one to be purple. So we're gonna sit this off to the side. This is me. So let's bring the other one back because I feel like what I want to do is while they're drying, I want to do some color mixing. So I want to stick with that purple and burgundy kind of theme and then I'll figure out another color that I want to add in there as well. But what you want to be careful with when you're blending colors together is depending on the color types, it could turn brown and now what you have is it looks like mud, right? So I am going to go rinse the brush off. So that when I come in here with the yellow, that it doesn't look all muddy like. Okay. And I know my design right now does not have a rhyme or a reason, but it's the direction I'm feeling ready to go, so that's what we're gonna do. And then we'll figure out everything else as we go along. So that's what you wanna do. Start putting together stuff that you like, because guess what? If I wanted to, I could also layer the caulk. I could do more caulk down the middle, more caulk on the inside, whatever I choose to do. So we might be able to figure that out too. So right now, I like the way it looks. This is kind of the look I'm going for as it relates to frame and the centerpiece, and we'll figure out what can go in there later, right? So we're gonna sit these off to the side to dry. And we have one more piece to do. So I'm gonna figure out what design I wanna do here. I'm thinking that I wanna go with pink and black, since that's paint we already have out, we've already used. So that's what I'm thinking I wanna go with. Right back. Sorry, you probably didn't want to look at my cabinets back right here. So what we're gonna do is let's go with some black paint down the middle. And then the raised ones, the raised pieces will do as um, the razzle Razzleberry, the, the hot pink, rose pink color that we have. There we go. 
Let's see if I can get some dark green on it. So remember, this is gonna be another necklace centerpiece, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down the middle and I have the brush flat to the middle and that way it's just going into the center crevices coming through the middle of the bar line. And then you can just follow along, follow the caulk along the side, along the edge. And it's not gonna matter if it gets on some of it, right? And see how down in there, you have the sides not covered, so go cover your sides. And turn it around and it's gonna go straight down the middle again or up the middle and put a healthy amount of paint on your brush so when you're dragging it through, you get great coverage. And then go back anywhere that you see any white pieces or any openings in there where you need to touch up, and just go touch it up. Now this one would be really pretty if we left it white because it kind of looks like skeleton bones. <laughs> I don't know, to me it does. So I don't know, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do white because that's gonna stand out way more than the pink. So maybe with what we could do is we could do the black base, we could make that white, and then we could do some pink specks. Again, this is your bar wire, you do what you want. But either way, I think we're gonna be pretty. And I know sometimes when I start out making stuff, I'm like, well, it's looking a little questionable. And I always feel good about how it turns out. So you don't always have to have a plan. My 15 year old taught me that I was thinking about that this morning. She said, Mom, she didn't say it today. She said it when she was little. And I was getting on her about something. And she said, Mom, everything doesn't have to be perfect. And when she said it at first, I got an attitude. I was like, yes, it does. It has to be perfect. But as I've grown older and as I've grown wiser, everything doesn't have to be perfect, right? Because when we deal and battle with perfectionism, I'm only sharing this with you because I battle with perfectionism, right? It causes stress, it causes anxiety, and you add that stress and anxiety to other, pe to other people, and sometimes to your kids, to your spouse, instead of just being. And so in my prayer journal, I just started a journal today, and I normally don't journal at all, but I found a journal I had bought from, so actually I had won it a long time ago at an event I went to. And one thing I wrote in there is just live in the moment and enjoy the moment and stop trying to control everything. Like, it would be so much better. And so that's one thing that my 15 year old has taught me is just to enjoy life. Stop making every, trying to make everything perfect and let it perfectly be. And what you can control, you control. What you can't, God has control. And it has just given me such great peace. So let's go let all these gorgeous pieces dry and we'll be right back. Hey, you guys. Okay, so look how super cute they came out. I thought I would put them on for you so you can see what they look like. So look, I actually put heartbeats along this one. So instead of doing a broken hearted earring, I decided to do heartbeats. Super cute. So these are the barbed wire hearts. And then this is a barbed wire necklace. And I just decided to do like a hot pink design. This is the one that had um, the black and the white. So I did a white barbed wire with some pink splotches and I think this just came out so super cute as a set. You ever see something on the rack and you're like, that is so ugly, right? <laughs> but then you see it on and you're like, it's super cute. That's what this reminds me of. So let's try on the next. Okay, you guys, so now look at this one. So this is the barbed wire necklace that was the black one with the gray box barbed wire. And then look how pretty. So this is the broken heart when this like, the blues and the ombre, like I just wanted it to look kind of like an ocean. And then what I did was I added some pink, um, the broken heart zigzag, I decided to do a pink. And that's just really super cute. So look how cute they came out. I mean, this is cock, right? I mean, you could make so many of these. Just imagine if you took, I mean, like some hair bands. These are those things that hold your hair back. I forgot, what I think they're called hair bands. Stretchy put it around your head, fit over my hair extensions and all that, 
right? And where it is a super cute little choker along with some earrings. It came out perfect. Love okay, it. you guys, so this is the pair that my 15 year old likes. So these are the red broken hearts. Super cute. And I added some white and it kind of gave them like an animated look. So these are super, super cute. Let's fix that jump. And they came out really adorable. So I really like how all of them came out. I wasn't really, like I said, sure what to expect. And they stand out. I feel like they're conversation pieces and super cute. I love it. Okay, one more pair. The other pair is a little questionable. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Try to jazz it up. It may be that pair that's like, mm -mm. but I don't know. But all the other ones, super cute, and I love them. That's like okay. So these are the other pairs. So what I did was I put a bunch of silver beads inside the dimensional mod podge, and then I painted them like white, like a buttermilk, and the yellow gold that was on the inside. So they're kind of like a collage. They look really pretty on too. Again, it goes back to that thing that you see on the rack and you're like, oh, that's not cute. But then when you put it on, it's really cute. And I think that also it would go well with some necklaces I had previously made that were chokers. So I think they came out really pretty. So anyway, I'm finished with the caulk barbed wire jewelry. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Tutorial. <laughs> tutorial my coffee has not processed and i'm hungry so anyway i think they came out super cute let's make something else i'll see you on the next video god bless you guys it's garlanda